Upendra. Yes, sir. Upendra, introduce yourself. I am Upendra. I am Upendra. I am basically from Karnal district, Andhra Pradesh. And currently staying at Hyderabad to pursue my technical course and searching for job also. And I complete my graduation in the year of 2022 uh, from the SU University Tirupati with a BSc Mass Physics Computer, Computer Science. And I have achieved my NCCC certificate in, the, in my graduation with A grade. And I have, I have, an, I want an opportunity to to enhance my skills towards the IT sector and by much. By consistency and hard working, I want to become as a senior software developer, and I have ability to, ability to, to do work independently with a minimal supervision of both individual and as well as team. And I am easily adaptable for the new environment. I am interested to in the learning new things, and I am a quick learner with the positive attitude by hard working. And I have, I want, I have a beautiful family consist of four members: me, father, mother, and sister. And uh, in my in my life, uh, I have one motto that is uh, try and try until I reach my goal. Uh, thank you, thank you for giving this opportunity to introduce myself, sir. So, what are your technical skills? Uh, I have trained in uh, full stack Java and uh, testing. Sir. So, in Java, in Java, so what are the concepts that you are mostly familiar with? Uh, Oops, concepts, collections, uh, exceptionally. Uh, packages, access modifiers, all this. So, what are OOPS concepts? OOPS concepts is nothing but object oriented programming system. It follows the four principles that is abstraction, encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. Okay. So, what do you mean by polymorphism? Polymorphism is a concept which one particular operation will exhibit the different behavior in different situations. It is called polymorphism. Okay. How many types of polymorphism are there? There are two types of polymorphism, sir. One is static polymorphism and the second one is dynamic polymorphism. What do you mean by static polymorphism? Uh, this is done in the compiled time through the concept of method overloading. It is called a static polymorphism and the dynamic polymorphism is done in the runtime through the method overriding concepts. So what is method overloading? Uh, two or more methods have same same two or more methods have the same name, but they differ in the parameters uh, like the sequence of parameters, number of parameters, uh, data types of parameters. Is called a method overloading. What is method overriding? Uh, method overriding is redefining the functionalities of the method of parent class and child class. So can we overload main method? Yes, sir. Main we can overload the main method, sir. Can we override the main method? No, sir. We cannot override the main method, sir. Why? Because main method is main method is too far runtime, sir. In runtime, we can override the methods. So, but main main method will accurate? It is static, sir. So we cannot override also. Okay. What are the inheritance? Inheritance is a concept which one class acquires the properties of the another class is called inheritance. Okay. How many types of inheritance are there? Uh, there are four, five types of inheritance in Java, but uh, we cannot uh, we cannot interact uh, di directly for multiple inheritance. And the, the remaining four we can uh, achieve by classes that is single inheritance, multi level inheritance, hierarchical inheritance, and hybrid inheritance. So why can't we? Uh, Achieve multiple inheritance because uh, because of the the chain class creating the ambiguity situation. Sir. What is that ambiguity situation? Uh, ambiguity situation is nothing but both the parent classes have the same method. They will con the chain class will confuse which method they can they will execute. This is called the ambiguity situation, sir. and it is known also diamond problem also. So what is meant by encapsulation? Encapsulation is the concept which we combine the data and code into the one single unit. It is called the encapsulation. So, what is an object? Object is an instance of class. If object is created, the memory allocation will be created, allocated for the data. What is meant by call by value? Call by value is if we, if we call a method, if, if we call a method by passing any values, it is called the call by value. Sir. What is meant by call by reference? Call by reference is if we pass if we call a method by passing a reference or object is called the call by reference. So what is the difference between call by value and call by reference? 
in carbon value the class variable the class variable value will not be changed sir in carbon reference the class variable value will be changes so what are class variables and local variables uh, local variables is nothing but uh, a, a variable which is declared inside inside a, inside a method for is called the local variable and uh, the a variable which is declared inside a class outside a method is called the class variables so what is super keyword super keyword is used for the to is used to refer the immediate parent class objects sir so what is mean by a string pool string pool is nothing but it is stored in the heap memory java heap memory uh, it will it will create it will check whether when it will check if the string string object is created first it will check for the string pool to, to decrease the uh, to decrease the objects string objects so what is an exception exception is uh, unwanted situation or un unwanted uh, unwanted uh, program unwanted course like that is that situation okay. so what is meant by exception handling and exception handling is nothing but the it is the mechanism to handle the exceptions is called exception handling so how many types of exceptions are there there are two types of exceptions sir one is checked exception and another one is unchecked exception explain checked and unchecked exception and checked exceptions are come in, come in the compiled run and unchecked exceptions are come in the run times so why do we need to handle the exceptions uh, to continue the normal flow of execution of the program to retain the or, uh, natural uh, original resources of the property and uh, to uh, to handle the exception uh, with by to handle the exception without uh, stop the program all this will be with the so how do you handle these exceptions we can handle this exception by some keywords such that is try and catch block and uh, final block and uh, throws exception and uh, throw exception these are the keywords to handle the exceptions so what is mean by array index out of bounds exception it is the it is exception it is the automatic it is array out of index bound of it is the unchecked uh, unchecked exceptions this is an unchecked exception yes sir but what yeah. is mean by array index uh, if when do you get that array index out of bounds uh, exception if you print the um, if if you if you print the array if you print the array more than the more size of the array we get the array out of bounds in index exception so if you give the array index value more than more than the given the given size okay. you will get that array index out of bounds exception okay what is a exception class exception class is nothing but it is a parent class for all exceptions so can we have a catch block without a try block no sir we can use both sir if we use the try block definitely we can use the catch blocks so one try block can have how many catch blocks uh, one try block can have many catch blocks sir what is a multi threading multi threading is nothing but execution of several threads simultaneously is called the multi threading sir so in how many ways we can create a thread and we can create a thread by using two ways sir one is thread class and another one is runnable interface sir so what is mean by a daemon thread daemon thread is nothing but it is used for a garbage collection sir to create a, to create a thread for garbage collection is called daemon threads what is the difference between array and array list array and array list array will be store the fixed size and uh, uh, similar kind of data data types and data set in array array list we can store store the objects and uh, with the different uh, different data types and differences so what is the difference between array list and vector in uh, the both are same the array list and uh, vector are same they are stored the value they are stored the objects but uh, array list array list is uh, non synchronized one and uh, vector is the synchronized ones so which performance is better is it array list or vector array, array list is the performance is the better sir. Okay. so what is a stack class stack class is uh, come from the collections list uh, it is it is stored the objects in uh, leaf orders what is meant by leaf 
लास्ट इन फर्स्ट आउट मैनर से लास्ट इन फर्स्ट आउट मैनर वेन द ऑब्जेक्ट विल विल एंटर द लास्ट इन द स्टैक इट विल इट विल बी आउट द फर्स्ट सो इफ यू वांट टू स्टोर द डेटा इन सम ऑर्डर सम असेंडिंग ऑर्डर सो व्हिच क्लास यू हैव टू यूज वी हैव टू यूज अ मैप इंटरवल हैश मैप इंटरवल हैश मैप इन हैश मैप वी हैव मेनी यस सर सो व्हिच वन वी हैव टू यूज टू स्टोर द वी कैन यूज थ्री मैप्स सर थ्री मैप एंड थ्री सेट वी वांट टू स्टोर द डेटा इन ascending order we have to go for tree set and tree set so what are the two classes which doesn't store the heterogeneous objects in collections so what are the two classes which doesn't store heterogeneous objects in collections that is uh, enumeration and iterator they are all heterogeneous objects and this is not a collection object Yes, sir. So we have array list, we have vector, we have many collection objects. Yes, sir. So everyone, everything allows heterogeneous objects. Yes, sir. But which which two classes will not allow these heterogeneous objects? That is hash map and tree map. This has tree set and tree map. So they will not allow heterogeneous objects. So what is the what are the differences between enumeration and iteration? Uh, they are both used for the transverse collection, but in uh, iter iteration uh, it will allow all the collection frameworks. In the enumeration it will not it will allow only vector class and a stream. Okay. So what are wrapper classes? Wrap wrapper classes are helpful to converting the objects into the primitive data type values and. Uh, It is called the auto boxing and the primitive data type values into the objects. That is called unboxing. Oh, you are saying very well, sir. So, can you write a program? Yes. Um, reverse of a number. Yes. Sir. Write a Java program for reverse of a number. Yes. Sir.
Indra. Good. Yes. Uh, I think you give mock interview on testing also, right? Yes, sir. So how was your experience? Is it helpful for you? Uh, yes, sir. I will get the confidence uh, to crack the uh, real interviews. Uh, I, we cannot uh, fear on the uh, companies we are, while we go to the walk-ins. And we have the experience, uh, we can understand uh, these concepts. Uh, and uh, we have to have more more interest uh, like to give the mock interviews and also and we can build uh, our confidence and uh, abilities on uh, and, uh, and the particular area, what, what area we have to be, what area we understand, what we can develop. Uh, if they, if we mock interview, we will test out the communication and technical questions and it's supposed to have this will help us to crack the real interviews. Okay, Pendra, all the best for your future. Thank you, sir.